Hey, in this video we will talk about allostatic load. Allostatic load was introduced by neuroendocrinologist Bruce McKeown and psychologist Elliot Stella in 1993. McKeown described allostatic load as the price people pay for adapting to stress. It refers to the long-term effects of continued exposure to chronic stress on the body. Simply put, it's the wear and tear on the body created by stress. You can think of things such as fluctuations in levels of hormones like cortisol and epinephrine, or fluctuation of the blood pressure or the immune function. Signs of allostatic loads are divided into 10 markets, divided in primary mediators and secondary outcomes. The primary mediators are, for example, cortisol, epinephrine and norepinephrine, and dehydroepianthrosterone sulfate. Um, very hard word. It's the indicator of adrenal gland functioning. Secondary outcomes are uh, systolic and diastolic blood pressure, HDL cholesterol and total cholesterol, glycated hemoglobin, um, it's the measure of recent glycemia, and voice tip ratio. There are four factors that contribute to the accumulation of strain leading to allostatic load. First, we have the amount of exposure. This is obviously key when we encounter more frequent, intense or prolonged stresses. We are likely to respond with a greater total amount of physiological activation. In the second place, we have magnitude of reactivity. So if you take any stressor, for example, like taking an exam, some students might react strongly to it and other students might not even react to it. And then we have rate of recovery. So after your encounter with a stressor, like taking an exam, your physiological responses might return to normal quickly. But uh, for other students, the responses can stay elevated. Finally, we have resource restoration. The resources we use during physiological strain gets replenished by various activities. Sleep is one of the most important activities that restores your body. Um, sleep deprivation itself can be a source of stress and contributes to allostatic load directly. So when combined, all these four factors determine our overall physiological stress burden. 